Welcome to Pro Wrestling Stories Presents on ProWrestlingStories.com. We're coming to you with a special edition of this podcast. It was this past Saturday where I had a chance to talk to Savio Vega for the second time. As you might not know already, Pro Wrestling Stories put out a two-part interview with Savio last month where he held nothing back. If you've not heard this interview already, please go to our podcast link on the top of ProWrestlingStories.com and you'll find it there. Now, I regularly frequent Squared Circle, which is a subreddit of Reddit. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's an entertainment, social networking, and news website where pro wrestling fans can submit content such as text posts or direct links. Squared Circle is hands down the biggest and greatest pro wrestling community on the net with almost 100,000 registered users. I highly suggest you check it out if you've never been there before. You can find it at reddit.com slash r slash squared circle or alternatively via a link on the sidebar of ProWrestlingStories.com. Now it's on Squared Circle where wrestlers pop in from time to time to do an Ask Me Anything session or other known as AMAs. AMAs are really cool because it gives the fan a chance to ask questions to their favorite wrestlers and the wrestlers respond back in real time, which is a really unique experience for everyone involved. Now Savio Vega, he's been asked to do AMAs in the past on Squared Circle, but he's not agreed to do them for a variety of reasons, one of the main ones being likely that English is not his first language, so typing in English is not his forte. But as Savio has got such a cult following on Squared Circle, and an AMA with him was something that's been sought after for a while, I got in touch with him and I said, hey Savio, a lot of us would like to have you do an AMA, would you be willing to do it if I call you up? I'll read you the questions, you respond, and I type up the answers. And he loved the idea. So on Saturday is when the AMA was. Over 300 people asked questions, and 50 of them were answered, which you're about to hear in this audio. Now this is the uncut version of my conversation with Savio, me reading out your questions, and him responding. Which is the way it should be heard anyways, from his mouth. Now I'm not a transcriber, so I may have missed a few words or phrases here and there on Saturday's AMA, so you get to hear it this way, which is something that I think you'll enjoy. If you do, please spread the word. Find us on Twitter at PWS underscore official, on Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Stories, or of course on ProWrestlingStories.com. I hope you enjoy the show. got over uh we've got about 136 questions so far so we're gonna get through wow. these all right sure. yeah we'll, we'll do as long as you got so um basically what's happening is i'll read the question you respond but i gotta type it so i might ask you to repeat a few things here and there and uh don't worry oh good all man. Right. okay so we're gonna start we with go. this first one there's a guy on reddit who goes by savio vega guy and he goes uh hi savio over the years a wrestler's ring attire has helped gave a glimpse of their personality as they compete. Steve Austin was no frills and wore trucks, boots, and kicked ass. The Undertaker dressed up as Count Creepy and wore primarily, primarily black. Shawn Michaels dressed as an effeminate male stripper. These get a bit funny. <laughs> These are among the many performers who let their personalities out through what they wore. For yourself, the most iconic gear you wore were the black pants and red shirt with the stripes. It's even getting immortalized in WWE 2K16. During that time, that gear stood out compared to many people on the roster. On top of that, we saw your personality reflected with the color red. Red represented your fiery temper, or maybe something to do with Kevin Spacey and American Beauty, I don't know. And that temper had you steamroll through the competition. Unfortunately, this gear preference would not last, and you ditched the red shirt for sleeveless undershirts when you partnered up with the Nation of Domination and eventually Los Bariquas. In many ways, you could compare this to Samson and totally not Hercules getting his hair cut and losing his powers. Compared to your time with the red shirt, this time was not that great, and you would eventually leave the then World Wrestling Federation. What I want to know is do you... Do you think keeping the red shirt would have helped you out or were things destined to go the way Dean's Ambrose hairline did following your loss to Mabel at King of the Ring 1995? 
My God, that was long. <laughs> I'm telling you, there, there's, there's going to be some pretty funny ones. <laughs> so what, what, what is your response to that? He's basically asking, um, do you think you lost King of the Ring because, the, what does he say? Or do you think the red shirt helped you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. I hope you can hear me too, yeah. Yes, yes, I hear you. Well, like you say, I, I was laughing because it's, it's, <laughs> uh, this guy come and, and he put out uh, nice stuff. Like they said, the red shirt is the one, you know, make me maybe win or lose. Uh, well, I guess the, the, the color I have to do nothing with that. Uh, maybe I, 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 maybe yes, I don't know. Maybe you have to wear it, uh, uh, like, like my bread, my friend, Bret Hart, pink and black. Maybe that helped me a lot, but you know, I, I guess that helped. <laughs> uh, I don't know because, uh, Shawn Michaels, you know, he used the, uh, the red pants and helped him a lot. Uh, I don't know. They probably, that have, that have to, I don't know. I don't know. What's the attitude era? Uh, I have my attitude too. Maybe that have to do with something with the push. Uh, I don't know, man. But uh, it's, it's funny. It's funny. Maybe I, I think what made me lose was my my hairline. I, I guess because I don't like it. But you know they want they want me to lose. You know to have something. I remember one time I start I I, I start doing it because I got a little. Uh, you know, the hair grow a little bit, and I start trying to, to make it. Oh my God! What I <laughs> I almost cut myself. I almost do. I have like a, a country country road in my head, but uh, I don't know. This this get you know, I have have to uh, the right words in Spanish. Uh, it, it, I mean. Oh. He's very uh, intelligent when he come up and and bring and bring. He has to be an artist or something. You know why? Because the way he he put everything out is like uh, uh, when you go into to the Bourbon Street or some some street in New York and somebody gonna make a cartoon out of you. You bring the most. Uh, 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 remarkable from your face or your nose or your ears and, and he bring all this stuff out. Yeah, that's, that's good. But I don't know. The color, the color maybe, yeah. If I've changed to black and pink, maybe that helped me a little bit. Like my friend, my, my good friend, he's a, he's a great guy. His friend, I love that guy, man. He's, he's a nice guy. He also wrote, oh, and did you ever rib fellow BSK member Undertaker about his fear of cucumbers. Oh, yes. He, he hates cucumbers. He hates cucumbers. Man. And, uh, I remember he mentioned that one time and I just bring him a cucumber. He's like, no, 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 no. You know, it wasn't like a kryptonite to Superman. You know? <laughs> so I say, I say, now I know how to be. Uh, yeah, but he hates <laughs> All right, that's great. All right, um, going on to another question. We have... Hi, Savio. You've had a fantastic career. By the way, this is by King Mabel Guy. So we have a lot okay. of people playing off of the uh, King of the Ring 95. You've had a fantastic career from your early days establishing yourself as an icon of Puerto Rican wrestling through to the WWF and prom promoting Asian wrestling as Quang the Ninja. Before long, you obviously established your most successful and well-known persona of Savio Vega, friend to Razor Ramon. Here you really put Caribbean wrestling on the map, following on from the legendary Carlos Colon. Later, you would join the Nation of Domination before returning to your roots with Los Periquas before unfortunately leaving the WWF. What I would like to know is that throughout your, that legendary career, was there ever a better moment for you than being the man to help launch King Mabel into stardom at the 95 King of the Ring? Yeah, this, uh, that, that match is supposed to uh, be taken by, by Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. He's supposed to wrestle in that King of the Ring. 
I don't know if they have a mind to do the same uh, storyline that they did with me, like the rest of four times. I don't, I don't think so, because I wasn't in Kino Ferrer. So when Razor hurts his ribs, table somewhere, I don't know. I hear some couple of stories about that. But I hear the, you know, he got hurt. So here comes Jack Lanza and says, Stop you. Got an interesting uh, night. To yeah, what happened? You're going to work tonight. Okay. Four times. Four times. Yeah. I said, Okay. Tell me what we're going to do. So he said, Let's do this. And he explained me well, all they want to do. I said, No problem. Let's do it. So, you know, that, uh, in, in that match with uh, Rest in Peace, he saw my great man Nelson. Nelson was, uh, oh my God, yeah, his name is Nelson. Uh, he, he, he is a great people, Rest in, rest in Peace, he saw. He's, uh, I mean, always been a nice people with me. Uh, last time I saw him, uh, I don't know, years ago, in, in some, I didn't even remember when. Uh, we, we do a, a signing autograph and stuff like that, and I hear they they there, and I went all the way to, to them, and he hugged me, man, and wow. But that's life. But you know that yeah, that helped that helped his career, of course, a little bit. I worked I worked that night. Uh, I hurt myself in my first uh, match with IRS. I hurt my my cartilage uh, ribs, and uh, and I took a bump outside almost in the beginning of the match, and I hurt myself. But I never say nothing to nobody. I just continue doing my job and, uh, and do what they wanted to do, me to do, you know, which is I got paid to do that. So I do I do my work. I do all the, uh, the things that they tell me. But, uh, I mean, I remember that that night, like, like what's last night? It was nice. I love work with all those guys in just one night, you know. And uh, I mean, happy, happy with that. But uh, I, I'm glad that I helped Nelson or, or King Mabel, you know, come up uh, at least one step in his career. Blaze Six asks, "What is your opinion on Billy Joel?" Billy Joel, who's Billy Joel? <laughs> Billy Joel is Billy Joel. Uh, if he's, if he's a uh, for us, where from now this era and WWF, honest, I don't follow. I don't know. I just know two guys, to be honest. But uh, who's Billy Joe? That's funny. Yeah, he's actually a singer, but I'm just gonna write Billy Joe. Who's Billy Joe? That's a funny response. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, this one's from In My Nothing. He's the moderator over at Squared Circle. And he says, I hated your strap match with Austin as a kid. And now as an adult, it's one of my favorite strap matches. Why do you think it appealed more to me as an adult than it did as a kid? Well, it's, it's also one of my favorite match. I mean, uh, I, that I ever did, and we did twice. We did it two times because the first time in the in the, in the pay per view, the light went off, and uh, you know, so the match. The only people that see that that match was the people in the arena. So we have to do it again on Encore uh, pay-per-view on Tuesday. Uh, and we did it. And they add five more minutes to the match. So, I mean, uh, and we got a couple of more thoughts uh, between Steve and me. And, uh, I mean, he's one of my favorites. As a kid, when he watched that match, of course, it's, uh, it's, a, get -me, it's a get me match. And, and, and what he saw is the belt. And that called his attention. The way we took the match and explained the match in the ring, step by step, and, and you know, and do what we have to do. Uh, I mean, everybody understand the match. Plus, the voiceovers guys, they did their job too. Uh, now that he's watching back again, now that, that he's, I want to call transport himself, uh, from he was a kid to an adult and watch it again, he could see details of the match. He could see what he cannot see when he was a kid. He just watched the match, and he liked, uh, you know, whatever he, he liked from the match. Now that he's an adult, he, he watched details 
why this happened, how he took that bump, why he moved over here, why it happened this, what happened that, you know. So that way, probably he enjoyed it more because the details that he missed when he was a kid. This is by a user French ST or French Street. Who do you respect most in wrestling and why? Well, to be honest, I respect everybody. I respect all the boys uh, from the old timers, of course, till the, the guy that started last night. You know, because when 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 you get in, in the ring and when you get in wrestling, uh, I mean, you fell in love with wrestling. And, and to us, the wrestlers, it's like uh, being a drug addict, to be honest. Uh, when I say that, it's like, uh, well, it sounds strong, but it is it's strong. To us, I mean, you can see the, the old famous still around. They never want to leave the green area. They want to be around. I mean, because we love wrestling. You know? And it's something that uh, I can't explain. I mean, uh, we could say that we want to retire, and next day somebody calls you and say, hey, we're going to have a match over here. We want you to sit down and help up there, you know. So it's, it's not really, really retired uh, because we're going to be around wrestling from till, till we die. And after we die, we're still in wrestling because, I mean, we, we're going to be mentioned everywhere or by somebody or whatever, you know. And uh, I respect everybody, to be honest. You, you, when you die, the people continue to mention you, you know. They're still talking about you. And, and it's still, I mean, you passed away and the people still remember you and talking about you. So, I mean, wrestling is for with us. It's going to be with us till we pass away and beyond. Because, uh, I mean, for the future, in future, wrestling still alive because somebody's going to keep it alive, you know. And, and, and you're going to be still mentioned. I mean, we, we still mention guys from the from the 50s from the 40s or whatever you know once in a while the people don't remember the old timers i don't remember many many of those guys but i i i, I could hear the name and i said yeah i hear that i, I hear that you know i hear uh the name of that person but i mean in wrestling we're gonna be uh we're gonna be in in in, in wrestling forever Ever and ever. And I, of course, like I said before, I respect everybody. That's brilliant. By the way, if you want to, um, are you near a computer right now? No, no. I'm in bed with my phone. Uh, no problem. Yeah, I was going to say, hey, you can follow this too or uh, get your family to read it too. It's, it's going to be good. So this is by Sean or Shawnee Kizzle. And he says, do you feel that you should have won the 95 King of the Ring? And what was your reaction to the crowd chanting ECW? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I know they're not going to keep it to me, of course, they, because they, they, they already have what they want to do. Uh, and it could be good anyway, but uh, the push wasn't for me, you know, at that time. Uh, and so it's good because we are right there in Philadelphia. You know, and uh, and they they compared me like uh, the Rocky movie with the statue. You know, he probably gonna make it. He beat uh, Yokozuna, beat IRS, beat the uh, uh, DJ, and blah blah blah. You know, so the end I have to wrestle the big monster, uh, Mabel, and I guess it was a good match. You know, I wasn't even tired or nothing. I was okay, happy. Adrenaline was so high on me, you know, and uh, uh, that feels good. I just just hurt my ribs a little bit, but I mean that that was nothing to to the excitement that I was receiving, you know. From I mean, they choose me to do that job, so I have to do it perfect. One 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 bullet, one kill. So that's what I did. I did I did the job. I guess I did the job. I don't know. Okay, we got a guy named Cruti, and he says, Hello, Mr. Vega. I'm a huge fan of yours. In your career, you found a great amount of success in the stables. 
from the powerful black power stable, The Nation of Domination, which also created the megastar that is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, to the Puerto Rican stable Los Periquas, it is arguable that these factions were a huge part of your success, the dominance of a fearsome stable united under one cause, always turn, turned heads, especially when filled to the brim with charismatic stars such as yourself. There are other examples of this. Evolution produced stars like Randy Orton and Batista. The Shield created three huge stars that are currently dominating the main event scene. Stables can also breathe new life into stars as we saw with the NWO, which made people like Hulk Hogan again. Stables and factions get talked about for years to come. Groups like the Nation of Domination, D-Generation X, the Dudley Family, the Nexus, the Bullet Club, the Four Horsemen, and Future being part, huge parts in wrestling history. My question is, do you believe that if placed into a powerful stable, could the career of Sean Stasiak reach the heights of a man like John Cena, or was his career always destined to fall apart like House of Cards constructed by Michael J. Fox following his loss to William Regal on the 22nd of April edition of Monday Night Raw in 2002? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what, Sean Stasiak is a great people. Uh, I, you know, he's a doctor, I believe, right now. He's a chiropractor, I believe so. Nice people, and he's alone. I don't know if he's married and he has kids now. I don't know. Uh, whatever he is right now, God bless him. He's alone in the world, man. Uh, Mom passed away, Pop passed away. No auntie, no, no family. He's alone, you know. And uh, when he started, he come he come here to Puerto Rico. We work a little bit with him. We work with him in the states too. Uh, nice buddy. He worked out hard, you know, for his uh, his career. He just he just couple of steps to to tie some bolts here there to break it. But I mean, the company was looking to the other direction, like we say, you know. But of course, I agree with him with when he say the uh, uh, the factions uh, make make uh, uh, superstars, and and I, and I I agree, I agree. Savio Vega, this is by Laboratory Tuxedo. What are some of your craziest experiences working in Puerto Rico? Wow, so many, man. Uh, I remember one time working with uh, Bruce Brody. Here, the friends in Puerto Rico, they believe big time in wrestling. And, uh, of course, everybody knows it's for entertainment right now and whatever. But still, they still come into the arenas and believe big time because the heel, the heel here in Puerto Rico uh, have to be believable, you know. And, and to, to become a heel in Puerto Rico, you need to get heat. And, and not cheap heat, you just spit in somebody in the face. So what are you going to get? and reaction if you speak somebody in the face, but doing the work in the ring. And I remember one time working with Bruce Brody in one of the towns. Uh, he saved my, my life. He, he grabbed me by my neck and pushed me to the side, pulled me, pulled me to the side. And uh, when I turned around, was an old man with a knife in his, in his arm, in his hand, to cut me, you know, because I was doing my, my you know, my heel stuff over there. Uh, and, and and we've been in in in, in a crazy uh, uh, people throwing stuff like like crazy here. Uh, one time at the TNT, uh, coming down the stairs in this uh, arena we take the TV. When I coming down was a pack arena. Even was people next to the stairs and the the rest of the fields coming down. And here come uh, down and this lady in the shoe try to hit uh, Pogo, Mr. Pogo, and try to hit my manager. And uh, so I come in behind, and I say, if she cut me, I mean, she hit me with that shoe, she's going to cut me. I was both bullheaded. And I just scared her. And I scared her. You know, she went back. So when I started running down the stairs, uh, as, uh, as SOB fan, grabbed me by the pants. So I cannot run. So when I turn around, He's in my face, screaming at me and, and yelling at me, and he threw a, a beer on my face. I just punch him right in the face. Boom. And here we come on the outside. 
here come the police, here come everybody. We left the arena. Uh, I went to court and everything. I just paid the fine that they let me go. But uh, I mean, so crazy stuff. He caught me by the pants. So when I turn around, he started yelling bad words to my face, Wait, I, which I don't care. You know, I just want to leave. But you know, he threw the beat on my face. That was like, a, okay, he used to fight. And I just punched him. He was out. He was out big time. And uh, I just jumped uh, in the dressing room. We grabbed, we jumped in a car for uh, the prophet. He was my manager. And we took off from the arena. And uh, later, they, uh, he was suing me. And we went to court and we went to a couple of things. Finally, the judge said, pay a fine. I pay a fine and get out of here. So, you know. But crazy, a couple of crazy stories from Puerto Rico. Fans jumping in the ring, like uh, lately in WWE, you know. I don't know, the security there, I don't know what's happening with them, but. What's your opinion on Bret Hart? This is by Pat Razor. Bret, Bret Hart, to me, is a, a great person. Nice people, good people. Uh, since we started uh, in, in WWE, or I started in WWE, uh, he always treated me good. He never, never uh, was, uh, uh, you know, that kind of a khaki champion or bullshit like that. No, he always was a good people. Uh, I remember one time uh, when he we went to Calgary. He just bought a big, big house. He invited us to to go to the house. He got a, a party for us. And uh, he said, come and see my house, come on, man. And he took us, gave us a tour around the house. And uh, Brett always was, a, a, I mean, always was a good person to me. And uh, I don't know if, you, if people know, he started his career here in Puerto Rico. His first, first match was here in Puerto Rico, in Ponce, Ponce, Puerto Rico. And uh, I mean, and, and and he was uh, when when I talked to him about that, he told me he said my first 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 match was here in Ponce. You know, I said wow, you know. And a uh, couple of years, I mean, no couple of years, let's say ten years ago, maybe or maybe more. Uh, a guy bring him to Puerto Rico to you know special uh, appearance, and uh, and I went there. You know, he said the friends coming to Puerto Rico, I need to see him. So we, we sit down and, and we eat and, and we watch a, a game. But a lot of time was uh, kind of uh, playing some somebody, I don't know, in, uh, for the championship. And we sit down and I never watch hockey, never. So I sit down with him and he's playing me the game, you know, the, and, uh, and and talk to me about some guys there and whatever. But, uh, I mean, it was, it was a pleasure to have him in, in here in Puerto Rico. And... Uh, I mean, but Brett always been a, a great person, a good, good person. I mean, his sex wife and, and the kids, too. I remember when the kids, uh, they're babies, you know. I always play with them, uh, and, and sometimes I get them in the ring to, to play with me. And uh, But always, man, it was uh, an old way. Oh, what a family, man. Good, good people, good people. This one's Budgies Are Cute. Hi, Savio. When you came to my area for a house show with what was then WWF, you took a picture backstage with my brother who had spina bifida and was in a wheelchair. He passed away this year at the age of 33. Oh. Yeah. You took the time to provide him with the memory. There were no cameras. There was no press. You did it because you wanted to. Thank you. Wow. I mean, sorry for that and Rest in peace, his soul. And, and I mean, that's who I am. And, you know, sometimes I see persons that cannot, you know, uh, take a picture or, or they're shy or, or they're like, I don't know, something happened. They they cannot, you know, go to the arena or whatever. I just passed it. And I said, come, you come with me. And I just, you know, want to make that, that their life easy, especially when he's a kid, you know, because, I mean, uh, so many times that I cannot do things that I want to go places when I was a kid. And so if you have, if it's in my hands and I could do whatever to, to make it, I mean, put a smile on a, a kid's uh, face, you know, past 
give him a pass, give him a ticket or, or give him a shirt or a picture or whatever, you know, I will do it. I do it. Don't cost me nothing anyway, you know. If it costs me, cost me. But I mean, make them happy. Sorry, sorry for the loss. This guy is called I Like El Generico. He asks, how do you feel being in the new WWE video game? Are you surprised at how well the announcement was received by fans? Uh, they, I know they're going to put me there because they called me and I had to sign a, a contract and all that stuff. And, uh, and uh, to be honest, I was in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. When I coming down and uh, catch me by surprise when we are in the uh, airport and I just received this avalanche of, of uh, texts by Twitter and Facebook and, you know, I'm like, what's going on here? So I start seeing, uh, you know, photos, friends from WhatsApp and everything. They start sending me the, the photos and congratulating me and all that stuff. I was like, wow, this is, this is nice. You know, and it's like I say in another interview, I, I'm happy, of course, but I'm happy because my, my fans, they're happy because they, they watching, they, they're, they're heavy, heavy, happy with what they, they, they see. And, and I mean, a bunch of people talking about they're going to buy the, the game because I'm there because they want to see another fight between, uh, uh, me, you know, but I'm happy because they're happy to hear. Oh, good man. Okay, so this is by Nickelback for Life. He says, what do you consider to be the definite Savio Vega match? For example, if you only had one match to show your grandkids, which one would you choose? Uh, I say, I said that kind of is a match, which is, you know, one of the good matches. Uh, a couple of matches that I did with Goldos too. Uh, I work almost everybody there except Shawn Michaels. Uh, I have a couple of matches with Undertaker as Quang. I have a match as uh, uh, Savio Vega with the Nation of Domination also. Uh, I have a good matches there. I, I remember one uh, as Quang. Yeah, I have a match as Quang, and I have another match. Yeah, in uh, uh, oh one one of the greatest match that I remember too was with uh, Bret Hart, of course. He was a champion, and I was doing Quang, and we break the record of ratings that that with that match, the ratings went up big time, you know. And uh, I don't know why they, you know, changed that character, but I mean that that character was kind of a strong because when ratings went up, it's because the people believe in the character, you know, and uh, and they believe that I could probably beat uh, uh, Bret Hart. I mean, Quan character was capable to to, to uh, beat Bret Hart for the uh, world title, you know. And the reigns went up, which I'm happy with that. But I have some, you know, some matches that I could say, you know, to my grandkids: watch, uh, watch uh, Grandpapa watching or uh, kicking an Undertaker ass. <laughs> you know. This guy says, "How are you?" <laughs> I'm okay. Thank God. I just, you know, looking for make more money. <laughs> if you have a booking, call me. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. This is by Mr. Truth. Savio, who is your favorite travel buddy? And you can tell us briefly about a crazy incident involving said person. Oh, uh, it definitely, of course, the Boricuas. I mean, we got the Spanish uh, guys uh, together, you know, and was a patio every night. Uh, you know, we have fun, but, uh, another, another people that I love, love to travel was, uh, Uncle Fuji, Fatu, and Yokozuna. Uh, before the, the Boricuas come out, uh, I was traveling with them. Uh, Uncle was the GPS because he know every, every arena, every road, because he was there forever. And you got Yoko, you got the music there. And Junior and me, we just driving and eat. <laughs> and a uh, quick uh, story here. We driving one time, I don't know where, I, mean, I forget the places. Uh, and, and Junior was in the back seat sleeping. Uncle Fu, no, Uncle Fuji was in the back uh, uh, seat sleeping. Junior was next to me sleeping and driving. 
And I think this wake up Junior. I said, Junior, do, do you remember the, the exit? He said, no. You don't know where we're going? Said, no. And he started, I'll call. I'll call. He said, yeah. Where are we going? Where's the exit? And just Fuji opened his eyes and he said, right here. Just say that. <laughs> right here. And we are like, a, what the heck? And we just, I just took, you know, tur turn right. And right there was the arena. And we are like, a, what the heck? He, that's what we call it, the GPS. He, he know every road, every road, every, every arena. I mean, wow. I mean, he just opened it. He was sleeping, snoring, you know, until, where's the arena? Right here. I'm uh, Kofuji. Miss it. Who is your favorite guy to wrestle? This is by Cool Hand Hazard. Uh, well, by that time, uh, Honest was Steve Austin. I mean, we, as soon as he gets his, uh, his feet in, in WWF, we are in San Antonio. That's when he did his uh, uh, tryout with WWF. And uh, I remember I was by the cafeteria, and here come uh, Pat Patterson and with him. So Sally, you're going to work uh, tonight with this kid. Let's see what he, he could show us. Uh, let me know. Let me know uh, what what you guys are going to do. He said, Sally, you're going over. I said, okay. I mean, no matter. We sit down, look at each other. I said, brother, uh, I don't know you. You don't know me. Uh, my finish move is this, and uh, that's it. That's what we talk. So let's just let's, let's walk in the ring. Okay. And since that moment, we have a chemistry brother that, you know, well, you can see the matches that we have before. I guess they're, they're okay. And uh, we work hard. Since that day on, they put us together all over the all over United States. I mean, we make it to, to WrestleMania, which I guess was okay. You know, that match at WrestleMania wasn't the greatest match. You know, I remember, I don't know what happened, but, you know, wasn't the, that strong. The, I mean, we have better matches, better, than, better match than that. And, uh, but I guess my partner there was with him, him and Goldos. I have a blast, fun working with the, with the Goldos. I mean, I, 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 I have good matches with everybody. You know, was maybe one match bad with somebody. Well, of course, that happened. But uh, you have to be uh, spoken. How come you never went to ECW or WCW after your WWF run? That was by lots of hugs. Yeah. Uh, when, when we finish, or my contract finish in, in WWF, we already know it's going to happen, uh, and we have already in mind open IWA Puerto Rico and uh, with Victor Quinones, because by the time by the time we work in WWF and and Los Boricuas and all that was out, we uh, we still in the, in the company doing Super Astros. Super Astros was a, a, another branch from WWF, but it's going to be the company in Spanish. Uh, that's another branch that Vince tried to to make it for the Spanish market. And uh, and that was uh, showing in Univision TV. And uh, Vince, we did uh, a season, 13 shows, and everybody was buying the, the product. It was high. So when the 13 weeks finished, here is the negotiation for for one hour show, uh, and Vince went uh, like sixty thousand dollars, something like that. And uh, they say no, and something happened. Uh, that somebody disrespecting that, and and Vince called over there and cursed these people and tell them whatever he he have to tell, and and the deal was closed. Never, never happen again. Uh, and here come our jobs to the crown. Because, I mean, wasn't nothing for us. He was already moving the stories to different places of different people. And uh, so I finished in 1999. And when that happened, we already have IWA. Uh, Victor have IWA uh, already 
with the permits and everything here in Puerto Rico. So we opened. We opened Puerto Rico. I I went to 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 Taker. On the Taker was a good friend of mine, and I said to him, "Brother, I finish here. I gotta go." He said, "What?" I said, "No, let me talk to them so they could give you another two two years." I said, "No, no, don't worry. I got I got something in Puerto Rico." But I do. I should take those two years to be honest. But you know. Uh, I just come to Puerto Rico. We have a blast working here. A nice experience. Uh, but I never, I never thought going to WCW or ECW. Never. I just uh, when we want, we went out to Puerto Rico. We did, which uh, was a lot, a lot of fun. To be honest. Uh, what member of the WWE universe would you want to wrestle today? The, the guys that I watch, that I that I know, I don't know at all. But uh, I, I guess I could have a good match with Orton, uh, Randy Orton, and uh, and I could take to, to the school John Cena to be honest. To have a good, good match. I love that answer. People are gonna love it. Okay, this guy Daniel Arshad says, "Hey Savio, thanks a ton for doing this. I'd like to know how hard was it to work with Ahmed Johnson? Any stories in particular about your time with him? Once again, thanks." I met Johnson. Nice people too. Nice, nice people. When I met I met Johnson, he just walked into. I believe we were in there in, in Dallas, his hometown, uh, and he just come to do a tryout. And uh, and he just come in. What's a regular show? How how show? And uh, I, I say something. I don't want to say it now, but you know, I said something to him there that he just look at me. You see this big black man, big strong sort of a gun, uh, you know, and he just walk in like a her, her, you know, he want to take over right, up, right away. And I said something to him, like, and uh, <clears throat> he just looked at me, all the BSK guy, you know, Yokozuna, Taker, Papa Chango, Junior, Fuji, me, Paul Bear, the guy, we all there, and he just look at me, he said, you motherfucker, he started laughing. Since that moment, we we come a good friendship, you know, and uh, I mean working with him was easy, to be honest. Look rough, but it was a good hand, good timing. I mean, it was was good working with them agents. What were your thoughts on Dutch Mantel? This is from Jake Trillian Hall. Dutch Mantel, the Dutchman. Uh, good people. I. I worked with him here in Puerto Rico. I met I met Dutch a long time ago. Then we have the opportunity to work in WWF. Uh, and we are not that close, you know, but once he come to Puerto Rico, he was working for Carlos along the CW company. Uh, I saw one time, I, I, go on, I, I, I was on my way to the office, and he was in the bus stop here in Puerto Rico. And I just stopped right there. Say, hey, man, what are you doing? I was waiting for the buses. Come on. I was having the ballot time. I have a, a H2 Homer. So he said, well, okay, let's go. And I took it to, to the hotel. And I said, I don't know if you'd like to. Well, I, I would like to have you work for us. I, said, I love working with you guys. I said, let's talk. So we sit down another day and, and, and we make a deal. And uh, he's one of the uh, guys took the company to, you know, to the success there was. Because it was Moody, a local guy, uh, our editor, Orville, which was a great guy too. Uh, then later was Luke Williams, the Butch Walker, uh, Dutch and me. Dutch and me. I mean, you have a great team there. And, and plus, you have another great team on the, on the boys. And, and I mean, since we got the story in where we wanted with all the videos, vignettes, and, and uh, whatever we're doing, the house has never come down from 3,000 people. I mean, that, that was packed everywhere we go, everywhere, you know. And, uh, and, and but I love Dutch. I love Dutch. He's, he's a great person. He's, uh, I mean, uh, what I could say, 
It's a great many people names. I love I love Dutch. I love Dutch. Name not name says Savio, when you fought Brachus, you had probably one of the coldest stares I've ever seen in unarmed combat at the time. Did he piss you off or something? No, no, no. <laughs> you know when when uh when I received the call uh, that you have in mind do this uh, bro for, for all. I was in my house with uh, packet eyes in my neck and the tent for the, you know, uh, massage because my neck was hurt. <clears throat> and Bruce Richard called me and said, Fabio, we have this type of mind that you kidding me. You, you know. I said, no, 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 it's true. You want to go in? I said, yeah. If they're going to pay $5,000 for each match, win or lose. Okay, sounds good. If you make it to the end, you're going to make $100,000. Then uh, it's going to be a pay per view match, which is going to make another hundred. dollars I said, sounds good. Let's go. So uh, before all that, we have a big meeting, yeah, because we're going to come up with the rules. And Vince want us, you know, come up with the rules. Because uh, you got Ken Chambrook, by that time he was an MMA wrestler. So it's going to be takedowns, how the takedowns going to be. It's going to be gloves, no gloves. It's going to be, uh, you know, kicks. We're talking about the kicks. So everybody say no because the only guy that kicked was me. He said, Sam is going to kill everybody with the kicks. No, nobody is, is a martial artist. So uh, the only guy was a uh, black man and me. So they're like, okay, so let's move this. So, you know, we start taking spouts. So, okay, it's going to be takedowns, such and such a points, no count, of course, points, and blah, blah, blah. So my first match was in practice, and practice called me, and, and he had this funny voice, and he's, ah, yeah. and uh, he said, I, said, I said, yes, bro, he say, we're going to fight. I said, yes, we're going to fight with the boxing, and I explained him everything. He's like, but it's just not real. Yes, because it's real. You know, have to be, and I explain everything. It's going to be money, this, this. It's like, a, oh, okay. So so we're going to fight that night. You know, I said, you okay, man? He said, yeah, okay. So he, he still thought that he's going to be like, a, I don't know, gimmick. I say, if he catch me with one of those arms, look like a two by two, Oh, four by four, at four by four, he's going to knock me out. So I need to protect myself, and I have to knock him out first. So you see the rest of the fight. You see the fight, you know. And uh, he was mean. He was pissed. You know, after that, he quit the company, too. You know, when I, you know when I tried to talk to him in the back. He didn't want to talk to me because, you know, what happened? I said, well, sorry. But, uh, or you or me. So it have to be me. So... You know, uh, from that point, I never know nothing about him no more. I don't know. But it was interesting. Oh, here's another one about Brawl for All. He says, it's from I Like Your Poetry. He says, hi, Savio, thanks so much for doing this. What was it like participating in the Brawl for All? Did those in the back assume it would be a giant mess? Or did they have aspirations it would be the next big thing? Well, I guess... I mean, when we have this, it's, it was more for the money at the moment, I guess, you know, no, you know, because what was the purpose of that? Get the guys beat up each other, you know? Uh, I don't know, because by the time it was, it was okay, you know, no problems, whatever. But, you know, uh, you see uh, uh, Mark Gunn knock out almost everybody. Bad, bad, bad. You know, and uh, the purpose was to, to, to make some money because right there you could hurt somebody bad, you know. Uh, poor Steve Wheat, he got hurt big time, you know, rest in peace. Uh, he growing, got hurt. Dr. Death, Steve William, he fight uh, uh, Bar Gun, and oh my God, Bar knocked him out. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Now, the purpose of that, that to me was like, I don't know, to watch the guys get beat up each other. The people love People love the matches, the matches, you know? This is from Salty Zend. He says, hey, Savio Vega, 
You were my favorite as a kid because of your energy and the name alone. My quick question for you is, if you could wrestle in any era, which one would you choose and why? Uh, well, I guess the, 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 I was just made for that the one that I did. Because, uh, I mean, it was the perfect one. Right now, uh, could be the one too, but it's so different, you know. Uh, I guess, I don't know. But my era was more wrestling, more as a wrestler, stuff like that. Right now, still, of course, as a wrestler. But it's, I have a little place. I don't know. Like I say, I don't watch it too much. I know just a little bit about video there. But I watch in, in Facebook and something come up, you know. But, uh, I mean, my era, of course, it was okay. A guy by the name of Nemskip says, why did Roman and Dean lie to us saying you were their third man? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I, got, I got so many calls uh, and, and friends send me the videos. Uh, I guess they just, you know, try to, to see how the people react, maybe. Maybe they want to put my name in the middle because the game has have to some people you know, from here, Puerto Rico, maybe some, you know, I know Puerto Ricans in the state, uh, you know, mention me in their, in their uh, websites or whatever. And they probably want to put that name there. Because why mention Saudi Vega after almost 20 years without mentioning, you know? I guess to just give it a little bit of a push of, uh, of the, uh, I mean, of the game. But if, I don't know if you see the, the pool that they did. They, 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 they did a pool with the, with the fans. It was good to have uh, Jericho or Savio, and the people vote for Savio. So, <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know. People still want to see you. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, so because a lot of, of those guys with that... Uh, on my era of the 90s, right now they are on to the 20s, you know? And much maybe work, but another part still watching wrestling, you know, 20 years later. So here that is like a, wow, bring somebody from, from the, that era. Now they have the doggies uh, working there, uh, take us still there, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, Stone Cold's going to do something in one of the favorite views, I guess, in, in WrestleMania, you know. And, hey, if they call me, I have to put myself in shape, of, of course, you know. But, you know, I, I, I could jump in the ring a little bit and do what I do. But why they do that, I don't know. Roddy Roddy Piper Jr. is the name of this guy on here. It says, can you wish the real Dan Hill a happy birthday? Of course. Happy birthday to Dan. What is it called? Dan? Uh, the real Dan Hill. <laughs> real Dan Hill. <laughs> real Dan <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, Savio. Thanks for taking the time to do this. The Attitude Era is known for its time of crude humor and violence. As a pioneer of the time, I would like to imagine you would also thrive in Philadelphia alongside the ECW boys. With that said, would you fight New Jack? Thanks. Yeah, I work, I work with New Jack here in Puerto Rico uh, in, in a long time ago, of course. I mean, I love, I love the guy. He's a great guy, great, great person, but I wrestle anybody. I'm not with that uh, kind of a CC. No, I don't want to wrestle that guy because whatever. Ah, it's cool. Let's do it. Let's dance. That's what I call it. It's Dan. So, of course, I wrestle. Well, this is a good one by Boner Medicine. He says, Hello, Savio. We all need to know, what does the green mist taste like? Well, that's a ninja secret. <laughs> hey, Savio. This is by Era Opa. Big fan who grew up watching you in your IWA days. Two questions. One, what did you draw inspiration from to do your heel general manager stuff? And two, 
given your entrance theme was, still is, I think, a badass remix of Engel and Tear by Rammstein, do you listen to them at all? I'm uh, not listening to the, to the music. They remix, of course, like you say, the, uh, the song and come out something great. Still using it today, and the people already hook on that. And uh, I mean the story in IWA, of course, I was I was part owner, but at uh, the same thing, like uh, like I was the general manager of the company. So we took that uh, position of the general manager to the front of the camera, of course, with the flavor of being a means uh, of SOV general manager, in where you know he was, you know, running the company with an iron fist. And the idea come out good, you know, because uh, here in Puerto Rico, I went to places to eat, and all the general managers from the restaurant always were saying, by, you know, my way or the highway. That's, that was my word in, in Spanish, you know, a mi manera o para la calle. So, I mean, all the fans, they're, they're uh, happy with the character of Sabio Vega being uh, the past meaning. General um, this is a silly question by Pugface, the Pugface. Savio, if you were a hot dog and you were starving, would you eat yourself? <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> the next person replies, Savio Vega guy, he's back again. He says, in a related question, would you eat the moon if it were made out of barbecue spare ribs? Oh, yeah, I love barbecue. Where is your quang mask currently? Asks Crisco eighty three. Well, I have I have one around here. The kids didn't play with that, but uh, yeah, I, I have one here, and I have the other ones, the, the ones that I use outside. I still have it. I have it. Here. What is your opinion of Lucha Underground? By that's by Keep Reefer Illegal. I watch a couple of couple of uh, uh, matches. You no, know, not a full segment, not a full show. I had just watched a couple of things. But I think it's great, you know, it's 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 a so popular the need to have I don't know, maybe another kind of a flavor. But like I say, I don't watch it so I cannot uh make a big comment uh, on, on the product. Uh I don't know I don't know the numbers. If they work in big time with numbers. Uh I don't you know, if they're gonna take that to another level to run in the States. You know, I guess just uh, it, so far it's a TV show, so it's good. It's good. It's another. It's another. Another way to watch wrestling. Bendicion Tio Savio. That's by Arda. Was it uh, Dark yeah. Cox? Loved watching you in the IWA way back when it was a thing. That was a big part of what made me a wrestling fan in general. My question: Out of all IWA's lifespan. What was your favorite moment? Wow. Uh, I mean, I say uh, it, it, it's hard to pick, to be honest. Hard to pick uh, because I have so many moments in where you got happy, where tears come out, uh, you know, and, wow, well, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. It's, it's so many, so many. Uh, still today, yesterday, I guess, uh, last night, yeah, I watched a video uh, a friend uh, put it, you know, posted to me, and I, I watched it, and, and I didn't even remember those moments. You know, it's things that we do so many things, you know, uh, every week was something new, 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 every week. So I, it's hard to say, to be honest, but to me, oh, all the moments that we did with IWA, I mean, was was uh, was great, very very good. Just have fun, and this you know that's the that's the name of the game, having fun. Luger one eighty says, who was everyone in BSK? Well, it was the Undertaker, Yokosuna, uh, Paul Bear, Uji, the Garwins. Papa Shango or Okama, uh, Patu, and myself. Real, real friends, 
to be honest. Real friends, real, uh, real, uh, real brothers. I mean, yeah. What's a, what's a, you know, anything that nobody or somebody need, the the other help, the other looking for the the next guy, you know, what's a, what's a good good friendship. Who are some of your closest friends in the business? This is by famous Mr. Nobody. I mean, yeah, Miguel Miguel Perez. We always watch to each other. Uh, I mean, from this era now, I mean, I say my, my brother, of course, Dennis, Dennis Rivera. Uh, Miguel was one of the guys. Uh, Victor Victor Rodriguez, he passed away. You know, that, that was great. I mean, real friends. People that could talk, you know, talk, could t say to my face, what I, I was doing wrong or was doing right, you know, and and no, no being behind your back and, and talk trash behind your back. They they they're real people. Would you like to be in two K seventeen as well? Asks Lila two three nine eight. Of course, I I love to. Do you have a lot of interactions with Vince? Any good stories? That was by Jay West twenty seven. Yes. Uh, when I met Vince by uh, the uh, 95, 94, something like that, uh, good people with me, of course, was J.J. Dino also there, a great, great person. And uh, one time I was in the, uh, uh, they called me to do uh, voiceovers in Spanish because Carlos Cabrera, they, uh, WWE, they called me one time to do voiceovers in Spanish, because Carlos Cabrera, uh, was Carlos or Hugo? One of them, they went to, to somewhere, I don't know, on vacation or something. So they called me, and they kept me in the uh, Stanford for almost five days. Say, so come down, stay here, and they give me a key for the whole office, and say, including Vince's office. I say, great, I'm going to sit down in his desk. So I have access to, to the whole company. And, uh, of course, because I want a key for the gym. So they give me a master key and they say, go everywhere you want. I say, okay, I just keep myself, you know, here. So, uh, I was doing, you know, working out there and I invite Vince to work out one day. I say, hey, come on, you're going to work out with me? He say, oh, I love it. So I say, he say, well, tonight, let's do it tonight. So I was in the gym waiting and he called me in the gym and said, sorry, I can't go because I have a meeting here, blah, blah, blah. I said, don't worry, so tomorrow. So next day, uh, I was there, he said six o'clock. I said, I was there already five o'clock, you know, and uh, and he said, I'm going to take a little time, do some warm up, you know, bike or whatever. I said, it's already done. I tell him. And he said, okay, so you ready? I said, I'm ready, let's go. Here he come downstairs. And working out with him, he worked like a, I mean, he was he worked hard, hard, hard. Now with him, that's when I discovered that I, my injury in my neck, I got the C7 near nerve pinch on my left arm. You know, coming from my neck all the way to my left arm. Working out with him, that's how I discovered that I was hurt. C7 strangled my tricep, my left tricep. You know, come from that, you know, from my neck all the way to my left arm and strangle my tricep, my back tricep. Uh, and working out with him, we're doing tricep, and I cannot lift the the dumbbell. I just do like five. After five, boom, cannot do it no more. And he's like, come on, come on, pushing me. Come on, come on. And I cannot. I'm like, what the heck? When my right arm was okay, coming back to the left, cannot do it. And he said, go check yourself. And I checked myself, and yes. And then after that, the nerve got worse and worse. And uh, one time in Midlands, I uh, had this match. I saw the match on TV, and I saw my face in pain. And I, re I remember coming from the ring, I went straight to the office. He had a meeting with Undertaker. I just interrupt, knock the door, interrupt. And he said, can I have a minute? I said, I need to talk to you now. He's like, what? And I just laid down on the couch there with my neck uh, leaned back. I said, I cannot 
I, mean, I got too much pain. My neck and I strained. He said, okay, go home. Go to the doctor. Let me know. So that's what I did. You know? And uh, they, they put me out of the, uh, of the uh, booking for a while, a long time. And uh, that's when they brought for all, you know, a couple of months later, they come out with the bra for all. And I was injury. Knowing that I was injury, I just, I want to do it. Say, hey, $5,000 for win or lose, let's do it, you know. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's good, good. I, I, I cannot say that I have uh, anything wrong with Vince uh, because, I mean, I learned a lot in that company, which that helped me to make it in IWA Puerto Rico. I sit down in, in a gorilla position in the back, always have his uh, headset there and, uh, and his monitor. And out on, on Monday nights when I have nothing to do, I sit down backstage, put his headset to listen to the previous hour before go live, uh, you know, the, the, the work they do it. And Bruce one time says, one of these days, he's going to come down and going to tell you, get the hell out of my chair. I said, he's not, I said, I said, he's not going to do that. And here he come one day, one time, and I took the headset on my head to, you know, give it to him, clean it. He said, no, no, stay there. I said, can I stay? He said, yeah, yeah. I just, I said, I, I just learned it. That's good. Stay there. And I said, well, I got the approval from the mighty, and I stay there. So I started listening to, to, Every every Monday that I don't have nothing to do, I sit down and listen to the TV. Uh, how do the to the to the TV? Cut here, cut there. Do this, do that. Blah blah blah. So I learn a lot from there. Just listening, just listening. How was replacing Shawn Michaels in the main event of No Way Out in your house with such famous individuals as your partners and opponents? Nice. That that was. Uh, I remember that match when they. Uh, that's what Chung was hurt or something like that. Uh, they they talking about who, and uh, here I was here and say, let's, let's have Shabby. And uh, it's just have, you know what to do and let's do it. So uh, they spray me, they say, how are we gonna do it? Well, people are gonna think it's gonna be a fall on Fabio. So they switch the, the uh, you know, what they're gonna do. And uh, that's what Mick Foley and me, we got together and I called Foley, I said, Foley, what about if we put in what wire and stuff like that? He said, yeah, let's do it. Oh, the guys was mad. Those, Steve Austin was mad to bring out the, the butt wire. And, uh, and I, saw, I talked to him because he, I know he know all that shit. So I said to him, what about if I start, you know, we bring butt wire and, and blah, 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 blah. He said, yeah, let's do it. I mean, Steve don't like that. Uh, Terry Funk was, I mean, they're kind of a piss because they cannot come in to save him because the, the rules are bullshit, you know, and they're screaming. And, and I mean, they got mad at uh, 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 Mick Foley because of uh, the, the bottom wire and stuff like that. But it was a good, I mean, uh, it was a good, good match. It was a great match anyway. You said Steve don't like that, Terry Funk. They were kind of pissed. Yeah, because what happened with the board wire, they, they don't count on that. I just, when the time was right, uh, Mick Foley and me, we did the queue, and I just went down, get the, the, the gloves, get the board wire, and start wrapping him around right away, you know. And uh, they didn't even know that's going to happen. They did not know? But, no, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows. Just, just, me, just me and me. We did it, and they're like, what the what is that? <laughs> I remember I was supposed to wrestle uh, Steve, some pay-per-view. I forget the pay-per-view, but I heard myself here working in Puerto Rico. My calf, I got stretched. My calf got, I, I say they, they explode. I mean, I, 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 just walking somehow, I, I don't know what's maybe too much tension in me or something like that. My cat just gave up on me. They they just tore both cat, and I cannot walk. So I went to the pay per view anyway, and I said to the people there, "Hey, I hurt myself." And uh, <laughs> I said to Vince, Vince, Vince asked me, "How you hurt?" I said, "Doing some deadlift." 
I said, doing what? Deadlift? I said, yes. He said, how the hell are you going to hurt yourself doing deadlift? I don't want to say to him that was doing work in a wrestle here in Puerto Rico because then later he's going to say, don't wrestle no more over there. So I'm like, oh, shit. And I got a little heat of that, you know, but I cannot walk. And I have to wrestle. I remember uh, Steve, and they replaced me with uh, Triple H. You know, they put Triple H in, in that match. But, you know, I never remember, to be honest, what paper it was. But I missed that paper. What do you think of Los Matadores? Do you know them? Yes, of course. Yeah, I know them big time. I know them since their kids. Uh, uh, more uh, Carlitos' brother, Eddie. Uh, I remember them with their babies, kids. And uh, Orlandito, uh, he wasn't too much around because his dad, he wasn't a wrestler. Uh, but I remember uh, Carlitos and Eddie, uh, good guys. They learn a lot to, to how to work. I mean, they coming from Puerto Rico and they know how to do how to work, of course. But uh, being there now. They, I, I saw them, uh, let's say, a month ago when they show up here in Puerto Rico. Uh, I took my kids there to watch uh, the matches, and I saw their match. I, I guess they're going to change their characters. They're going to do without a mask. I don't know if they're going to be the new Boricuas, maybe. Uh, they probably come back to the factions. I don't know. hope they call me to be a Boricua. Well, let's see what happens. You never know. Because they they talking they try to talk to Carly again to Carlitos. I hear they they start talking to him. I don't know. They're talking about the money and I don't know. But if they're gonna change their character and they're gonna do something, hope they do something like the Mariquas. What's your opinion on the New Day and the comparisons they received at first as the New Nation? <laughs> the funny, the funny, funny guys. I mean, I, that's good. That's a that's a that characters of those guys, what they're doing right now, that could be turned to be a mean sort of a bitches if they want to do something, you know, stretching. But right now they're kind of a funny guys or whatever, but they could be a mean sort of a guy. I mean, if they put some flavor on them, like uh, be the heels, they could be, I mean, it's going to be a new day, but a new day with the bad guys, you know, where they could beat everybody up. I don't know. They probably want. To, I don't know. You never know what they doing. You know, just the uh, office brain. But uh, I could turn those guys heels, of course. Will you ever consider wrestling one time, one final time in a WWE ring? As the real magician. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if, if, with a good story, um, of course. Like the the ones these guys just did. The other day, I mean, that was a good story that they have already running by themselves and bring a mysterious uh, third guy. I mean, you see the reaction of the people. They love it, you know. So it could be good, you know, to do something, of course, why not, and, uh, and, and, and to show up by face in the new era and, of course, at the same time, do what I love and make some money. What was the most fun thing you ever did while in the WWF? One time uh, we were in Singapore, and uh, I mean, the fun places or fun moments was with Owen and uh, the British Bulldog, Baby Boy. God have their soul. Uh, I mean, and they have to be laughing with those two over there because, I mean, they're funny. They make everybody laugh what they doing. I mean, fun. Uh, Mike Kiora, they got Mike Kiora one time in England. It was in England, yeah, England. Let me say this one first. In England. And uh, we fly next day. The disco was on the hotel. And here come, leaving to, to the rooms. The disco was closed. When David Boy was called by Lex Luger. Lucas said, look, so uh, Mike Kyoto was out. Here come uh, a boy sit next to him, puts his arm around him, and Mike was out. That's when he looked for his clippers, 
and shape him right there in front of everybody. Oh my God! After that, he wake him up. Uh, I mean, he was mad. He jump in. He wake up. See what happened. Jump in the elevator, grab his bag, and went straight to the airport. <laughs> and uh, another time in Singapore, uh, Owen grabbed Dink. Remember Doink and Dink? He, he grabbed Dink and sit him in the chair, tie him with tape uh, you know, to the chair, and put foam all over his face and, and head and everything. And we put it in the middle of the hallway. And he was there for a couple of minutes, you know. But I mean, I mean, couple couple of stories was, was good. Another time, Owen uh, leaving the arena somewhere, uh, got stopped by the you know, he got stopped by the police, and the driver was uh, Lex Luger. So the police started talking to Luger when Owen said, "Fuck you." <laughs> and, and the police say, "What? What do you say?" I said, no, I don't say nothing. He he, he talked. He say, "I'm not talking." The police says, "Okay, come out of the car. Put your hands there, and Owen come back to fuck you." And everything, uh, you know, at the end of everything, the fans coming out of the arena, saw an ex Luger with his arm spread and everything, and everything was a joke. Owen already talked to the police. And tell them what they're gonna do. So, I mean, what's a joke, Lex Luger? And Lex, after that, was pissed. pissed. <laughs> but I mean, hey man, but was was happy, happy moments, man. Those two. This is a great question by Tank Swan. Hey Savio, do you know of any Puerto Rican talent up and coming we should look out for? Well, well to be honest, I'm gonna push it. It's my brother. That is, that is, uh, I have a couple of years in the business. And he's coming up good. And, uh, uh, but of course, I saw a guy this Wednesday uh, named Hulky, Hulky Jr. He's from one of the independents. And the kid have the timing, have, I mean, good, good timing. He's another guy, I forget the name right now, for another company, uh, BPS company, uh, another indie locally. I mean, guys that just need to polish. They need just somebody uh, to watch for them and teach them. I work with uh, this second guy that I mentioned, and uh, I mean, he was all nervous, big time. He was TC. He don't listen. He was like, oh, so nervous, you know. And I, I, I said to him, relax, relax, you know. Let me, let me, I mean, this is easy. And he was so nervous that he cannot, can, he cannot relax, you know. So, and after that, I sit down with him in the back, talk to him. But yeah, he's a couple of, couple of talents here in Puerto Rico that they just need to be in the spot. And of course, somebody to teach them. I started watching wrestling when I was about seven years old at the height of the three-way feud between Los Bariquas, DOA, and the Nation of Domination. At the time, it just seemed like three wrestling groups feuding. But as I got older, I felt like the gang wars were meant to be racially charged. What were your opinions on the role race played in the storyline? Also, I think I remember from my Ground Zero 97 VHS that the triple threat match between you, Farouk, and Crush was the first three-way match in WWF history. What was it like putting that match together, and whose idea was it? Of course, the idea was the, uh, the company, you know, to, to have that uh, uh, done, because that's when uh, uh, Farouk, by Crush, by me, so we have this match, and, and I would I come up, you know, they put me up, you know, and uh, was was a good match till we do the uh, neck breaker that I went one way and Farouk went another, <laughs> you know, but uh, I mean that's like uh, the idea, of course, come from the company, uh, and uh, I don't see nothing vicious. In that in this uh, stuff. I mean, you got the DOA that looked like, uh, you know, uh, the bikers guy, white stuff, white supremacy, whatever they want to call it. But no, it wasn't nothing racist there, you know. And uh, you got the Latinos with the Mariquas, and uh, you got the black guys with the uh, nation of domination, 
which I love nature and nature. Man. To be honest, when I was there, I had so fun, so much fun, and, and working as a heel with the nation of domination, man. I love that crew, and uh, I mean, but to be see something racial there, no. To be honest, uh, at least the, the point of view that I saw it, it wasn't something there. I missed it, but uh, it was a good good faction. This is in Spanish, so I'm going to do my best here. Uh, it says, Hi, Savio, Latin fan here from Chile. Your favorite match, sandwich, and book. And then he says, Te gustaría entrar de sorpresa en algún total rumble. Lo ves posible. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, it's not such a uh, surprise. What, he's, what he means there, I don't know if you understand. If you like to getting in a, uh, like a, a surprise, just appear myself as a surprise and, and create a ramble. I mean, it's no, nothing such as like that, you know, uh, especially when you are a professional wrestler uh, showing up in the company like that and jump in the ring, is, that's a, that doesn't work, you know. Uh, but coming from the company, of course, why not? Favorite sandwich. <laughs> wow. I say chicken. Favorite book? Book. Uh, well, one that I have to read. I started reading and I stopped the Bible. Yeah, so the ones you start, you start reading and you stop. And stop because whatever. But uh, I have to read. Hey there, Savio Vega, big fan. I got introduced to you from my father, who was also a crazy huge fan, and always felt you never got the recognition you respect as a worker. My question is two parts. One, is there any wrestler you felt should have had a bigger, or should have been bigger? And two, with how the locker room is today with allegations of racism, has there ever been a moment where you were discriminated or seen a case of discrimination while you're working with the WWF? Yeah, one time I feel discriminated by uh, Vince Russo, you know, and uh, but the words that he used and the moment I don't understand it and I was like a, kind of a confused with, you know, looking for the right uh, meaning. But yeah, of course, I feel it. I feel it. But uh, then later I asked him, I confront him, I said, what, what are you saying? He said, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, you know, so... I mean, he he don't show me that he got balls to say it again. But you know, that passed. But the discrimination at on these days, I guess so many people are so touchy with so stupid things, you know. Uh I don't know. By that time we we, we fun to each other and I mean you know, we put uh, Puerto Rican stuff, American stuff, black stuff and whatever. And everybody happy, everybody laughing about it, and that's it. You know, we don't stay in the hole. Just get out of the hole and get fun with that and continue working. Was there any wrestler you felt should have been bigger? By that time, I guess everybody got their push, man. It, you know, everybody got their, their stuff. I guess Sabio Vega, of course. <laughs> this guy asks Steve McQueen, what are your feelings on medical marijuana in wrestling for pain? Do you smoke? You don't have to answer that last part, but what are your thoughts on it? Well, if uh, that helps and the people feel happy, uh, you know, smoking, and they, that help their, their sickness, I mean, hey, God bless them. Continue, you know? If it's just for get high and be crazy, uh, don't do it, you know, but if it's medical and help a lot of people, and I know people, I might just, no, man, I, I talked to somebody that suffering by cancer as a girl the other day, and I asked her, are you okay? What, what else are you doing for that? He said, just smoking. I said, oh, yeah? I said, and how you feel? I said, I feel good. I feel better. You know, I've worked the pain and whatever. And I said, well, if it's like that, just continue. That's what I say. If it helps you, go ahead and tell them no, no smoking. Thank you. What did you think of Bruiser Brody? Oh my God! Um, 
good people first you know uh, I met it I met it in, in here in Puerto Rico when I was I was working as a security guard for the company and I loved the character the person was a uh, good people you know with me uh, a couple of years later I had the opportunity to we you know to work with him and uh, and, uh, I mean, he protect me, like I said before, and uh, worked with him in Japan too <coughs> for uh, Baba's office, All Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, as a big tournament that they run there every year. And uh, what happened in Puerto Rico, of course, is sad. Uh, that stupid thing, Mark. He uh, wrestled in Puerto Rico forever and wasn't no justice. Was a lot of money involved in that stupid shit. And still the fans talking about that in Puerto Rico. Every year when it's a Brody anniversary here in Puerto Rico, we talk about that. Not just with the anniversary. That's every day in the business because we still have Jose around and of course he feel before I don't know now I don't know if he already uh, feel guilty or not I don't know I need to talk to him about that I need to talk to him at all in this moment and uh, sad, make me sad. I was there. A lot of people think that he just passed away there. Not. He went to the hospital. They took him to the hospital, and they uh, practiced uh, uh, surgery on him. Through the night, he he bleed and he died. And it happened, I don't know how many years ago, and I still, uh, you know, don't like to talk about that too much, but uh, bad, to be honest. Bad, bad, bad. I wish, I wish to talk to his kid. You want to talk to um, uh, Brody's kids? Yeah, he have one. I never have a chance. He was a kid when that happened. His wife remarried again. She's married. I hear the kid. I mean, he's already, what, 21, maybe 22 years old, something like that. You know, he's, he's in, uh, I forget where. He was studying, I believe so. I saw a picture of, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it was him or not. He, he, I hear he don't want to know nothing about any memories or ribs that stand out from the late Owen Hart? Well, like I said before, the ones with uh, Lex Luger. Uh, one time, we coming down the Allentown, uh, Allentown uh, University, Pennsylvania, yeah, and was uh, the arena was like in a mountain, and here we coming down, and we see a deer, and I was driving, I was driving. And I saw a deer, and I was like, hey, my right deer, deer. I said, wow, look at that. So I'm coming down, and Sumai passed that. He hit the ceiling of the car. Boom. He said, oh, my God, you hit it, you hit it, you hit it. I'm so stupid. I stopped the car. And I started looking around. I said, oh, my God. He started going, oh, my God, you hit it. Oh. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jim, the Anvil Nightheart, uh, looked at me. He said, come on, Savio. You gotta believe him. <laughs> I'm like, but I, I, I say, oh, this is so, so, so we just continue, you know. And uh, Owen was a funny guy, man. He was a funny, funny guy. I mean, we miss him, man. And uh, uh, I mean, let me see another one. He he ate so many that you know it's, it's hard to, to start thinking. But uh, I mean, Owen Owen was uh, always miss this guy, man. Him and, and, and 
It's another thing. I I mean, I remember from uh, uh, the British folder, but I, I want to say it here. But uh, it's, it's Owen. Owen was a, a funny guy. You always make you laugh. Man. Tell me, tell me when you gotta go, man. I I I keep reading these. <laughs> you just say if you gotta yeah, go or whatever. I got I, yeah, I got two shows tonight. It's, uh, Are you doing seven, shows tonight? Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. It's uh, seven twenty-five. Yeah. Let me go. I have to shave. It's like we said before. The TS. Shed, shower, and shave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks to all the fans, of course, the ones uh, still remember Savio Vega. Thank you very much. And the ones that don't remember Savio Vega, look for my matches on YouTube and know the motherfucker. <laughs> and if they want to follow me, Instagram is Tio, T I O T O Savio Vega, and Twitter at Savio Vega. And on Facebook, uh, Savio Vega official fan page. Savio, it's an absolute pleasure. You've made a lot of people happy here, and they're gonna, oh, on Reddit. I don't know if you know this, but you're, there's a cult following for you. So many people just seem to just absolutely love you. And the whole like King of the Ring thing, they're always talking about how yeah. it should have been you. So you coming up and doing this, ask me anything. I'm telling you, it's gonna be talked about for a while. So keep your eye open on Squared Circle and. You'll you read a lot of great things. Thank you, man. I will. I will. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, just just put it there. We're gonna be on, on January 18 uh, on Amaro Production. Get, tell tell the fans to keep the eye on Amaro Production, which is uh, on Twitter also. And uh, it's gonna be you know it's a oh, company that's coming up slowly but strong. I so tweet it like uh, at, at Amaro Pro. Also on Facebook, the model, uh, model production. No worries. I'll find those links and I'll put them all up there. Savio, it's been an absolute pleasure. Okay. Thank you so much for this. And, Thank you. And we'll keep in touch. We'll, you know, hopefully down the line we'll uh, we'll be able to have another chat. All right, brother. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, man. We'll talk soon. Yes. You too, man. All right. Okay. Bye now. Take care. Bye bye. You have been listening to Pro Wrestling Stories Presents on ProWrestlingStories.com. If you like what you hear, let us know on Twitter at PWS underscore official, on Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Stories, or on email at admin at ProWrestlingStories.com. If you'd like to give back and donate, please click the little button that says I'd like to do a little something to say thanks on the page. Until next time.